Hey everybody, it's Ed. The future is now, and the future is gold. Um, I want to talk about today balancing the portfolio, and just balancing any portfolio. But also, we want to get into it first, the Dow Jones chart, okay? And how, you know, basically, just I chart the Dow as a whole, just to keep an eye on the entire market, because it's critical. The market will reflect all kinds of stocks in some way, shape, or form. So I told you guys that I always track the Dow. Okay, it's super important. And you can see back in 2018, late, there was a significant correction. And it's basically been in an up channel ever since, trying to break new highs. And it hasn't always broken a new high. You can see in September, it had a lower high, but then it broke that as well. And the next major resistance is obviously 30,000. Okay, 30,000 has never been hit on the Dow. That is absolutely going to be a resistance for the Dow. Okay, so if you're charting the Dow, first things first, just put it in one, whatever charting platform you're using. Dollar sign DJI. Okay, and now you can see I did a 30 year here to show you really what's happened in the history at least our current history in our lifetime. I don't need to go back to 87 crash, um, which I saw specifically. I saw it happen. I mean, I was a kid, but it still impacted a lot of people. But anyway, skip by that. Let's start with the dot-com bubble in 2000. You can see where I circled it in orange. That that's basically you can see that it was going sideways. It was almost inevitable. If you didn't see this and get out of the bubble in time and you were in stocks, then you made a huge mistake because it was obvious. I never would have been in the market here going sideways in 2000. But anyway, so you can see 9-11 caused a major crash in the market there. And it picked back up after that, but it still kind of tanked into 2002 and 2003. But from 2003 on, you saw a ton of innovation. and But then again, we went right into a financial crisis. And so for years, the mortgage companies were allowing people, homeowners, to purchase homes on very low income. And then I, in my estimation, they were falsifying some income, like, oh, where are you making money from? And people were saying, oh, well, I'm making this extra money from here, from here, whatever. And there was a lot of scandal with that. And the market took a bath in 2008 because of that. I was investing, I was day trading at the time, and I saw the turnover in the market. So I pulled out of the market. I saw that way ahead of time. So I didn't get punished for that scenario. So in 2015, you had what's called, I guess, the Great Fall of China. We had some global issues, and it wasn't, it was, Europe had some issues as well. So, I mean, that was somewhat of a correction. It really wasn't a complete disaster. And the most recent correction was in the end of 2018. And that also wasn't a major disaster, um, is a, you know, globally. But it definitely was a correction. So we've had multiple corrections in the last 10 years. Normally, the market moves up about seven years. And it'll move down about six months to a year. So to reiterate, the bull market usually runs seven to 10 years. Okay, this is on average cyclical market over the last 100 years. And then a bear market runs about six months to really a year to two years maximum. So grand scheme of things, the market's looking pretty good right now. We already had a recent correction. So, I mean, I know we have all this issues with, okay, we have the impeachment and we have the Contra virus and we have all kinds of reasons to fear stuff. But when you're looking at the data, you know, of the charting data, it doesn't look as bad. So if you follow my channel in the future, we will always talk about the Dow, but we'll always, we'll basically warn people, if, we, if I see anything that's looking suspicious in the Dow, you don't want to be trapped in that in case it does have a correction. You could be out, or at least out of your equity positions as a whole, and then buy back in cheaper. 
instead of just take a bath during a correction. There's no reason to do that if you are tracking the market. So in plus, and this is here is where I want to translate into gold. So the reason we're starting a gold position is so that if we get in a situation of a correction, we can slide into gold and potentially other developments. So after surveying a few different gold mining or gold ETFs, the one that I found that I like personally, and you need to do your own homework when it comes to this, the ticker symbol is GLD on the NICE, New York Stock Exchange. It's the Spider Gold Shares. Now, the reason I like this ETF is they pretty much just mimic gold and how gold moves. So I do like this one specifically. And you can see where I highlighted my circle in green. That's a buying spot. We didn't buy there. But you can see it, it's formed an upward channel. And then it kicked back. And now it's, it's bouncing up again. And this is what I really like to see. I like when it kicks off the line and bounces up because it shows positive momentum and positive trend. So this is the one that we're going to get involved in, and we'll start a position here. The share values, I think it's 147.98 currently. But this is what I like specifically. I mean, and once again, I said you need to really look to see what you would do if you like silver, or you like gold, or depending on what you want to do specifically. I told you guys in the past that gold is a good place of safety in case the market does have a correction. You could potentially make money in gold when the market is going down. So, and it hedges your bets. So we have a lot of equity positions right now. So it hedges our bets a little bit with the equity positions as well. So it just diversifies your portfolio as a whole. You should have some sort of precious metal, in my estimation, in your portfolio. I just, I believe in that. So I also believe that you should have some sort of biotech or pharma or medical delivery in your portfolio. I currently don't have, we don't have anything involved in that right now, but I am researching it constantly right now. So if you guys leave in the comments, if you guys like any specific medical or, you know, health care type of stock, let me know. ISGR or Intuitive Surgical is one that we were currently looking at. The value of the shares is very high right now, but as far as the company goes, I'm definitely going to be researching that company but I'm not too sure what we're gonna get involved in. So I need a little bit of help. So do me a favor, if you guys have a biotech or a company that you like or that you think is good, I wanna track it. So do me a favor, post it in the comments so I can look it up and see how the chart looks and see what the company's developing, see what's out there in the pipeline for the next six months, year, two years. So to sum it up, there's nothing wrong with diversifying with some gold positions or any precious metal for that matter because it, it doesn't move exactly with the regular markets. So it's a good safety play in general and it's something to diversify your portfolio with. So that's our plan of attack and we'll see what we do this week on that but be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification, like it, share the video and um, definitely we'll keep you posted on any purchases of any stock or any indications of any market turns in any direction. Keep following the Dow, and uh, that definitely will lead to good things.